Uh, Evie says hi and uh, she's really sorry she couldn't be here, especially of course since she's been uh, running this pilot uh, and documenting it. So uh, I'll try to do my best to present it in a, a good way anyway. Uh, so uh, this is coming back to the pilots I talked about earlier in uh, the work package four in terms of teleconsultation. So this is one of the seven pilots. This is the one that where we had the uh, uh, Blekinge Wound Center, which is basically a center where you deal with wounds, classic wounds. You cut yourself or something like that, and uh, the primary health care situation. Uh, and I'm going to deal with uh, the lessons learned from this. Uh, so just a little bit of the context. I'm not sure how uh, good you are with Swedish geography, but at least uh, uh, this is the southeast corner of Sweden where we have Karlskrona, where uh, uh, most of the uh, healthcare in Blekinge is situated. We also have a hospital over in Karlsson. And then basically these are all the counties uh, we have in Blekinge. Uh, the wound care center is basically, you see, it's uh, distributed. But the main point here is that you have wound care center and then you want to have the ability to have communication with other healthcare professionals and also their patients. Uh, the technology used here is uh, Link uh, for video conferencing, uh, Logitech web camera, and then some you know, classic stuff you need to keep things running, some cords and computer. We also tried uh, uh, to use tablets, iPads, and different types of wired and uh, mobile connections. Of course, why people talk about mobile connections is, of course, if you want to move away, it's really hard to have a a 400 kilometer long extension cord, so you need some kind of mobile connection. Uh, the different types of sessions we've been running is basically four types of session. Uh, one is the type A session uh, up to the right, where we have the teleconsultation with only dialogue. The type B is the teleconsultation based where we actually have a photo of an actual wound. The type C is where you have the teleconsultation uh, when you're actually having a patient consultation. And the type D is a teleconsultation with another primary healthcare nurse as a learner, which can actually then be seen as a kind of mentor-mentee situation. Uh, there have been differences in terms of whether there have been wired or mobile connection, and also there have been planned sessions, and then also basically on-the-fly sessions to grab a session whenever there's a possibility. And if you're looking at the whole point of uh, telemedicine and telecommunication is to be able to uh, start it on the fly. People don't, uh, in general, get hurt uh, when they're scheduled to get hurt. They do hurt themselves outside office hours also. Uh, so if you look a little bit on the experience, uh, so there are some strengths and benefits. So if we look at to the left, uh, we see that, uh, <clears throat> I talked about technology earlier, the available technology is quite easy, quite cheap, it works. Uh, it gives you fast, easy access to wound specialists, because there are specialists in this, in this genre. Uh, you have a more secure assessment, treating and dressing, and this is of course because you have the accessibility to have professionals who are better skilled in a certain wound than you are. You do save money in time, you have less travels, it also facilitates learning. Uh, and also, uh, we've seen that the patients actually appreciate being present at these teleconsultations. And there's also less travels for the patients. So there were a lot of downsides to be seen before starting. And one of these was uh, very much directed towards the patient. But they actually perceived this as something good. Uh, and this also causes some improvements. Basically, you build competence in wound treatment. You get collegial dialogues, which of course is good because it, it creates the knowledge community, and you also get working satisfaction. So this is the kind of strengths and benefits we see coming out of this pilot. If we look at the uh, IT support, look at the IT support, uh, here we see there are some challenges. In general, we've seen uh, in the region of Blekinge, uh, there was a kind of poor interest from the county council IT unit. I'm not sure if everybody recognized this, but uh, it's probably similar all around the world. The IT people don't really want to uh, bring in new technology because it messes up their perfectly planned existing system. Uh, 
also difficult to get access to the equipment. When you have the equipment, it's kind of easy. But to get access to this, it basically means that you have to go through some purchasing process. And again, you come back to that, you, uh, you end up with the IT department and they don't want to change things. When you have things going, you see that there is an overpromise in what you can do with 3G connections. We have 4G networks in Sweden today, but in general, it's 3G and it's just too slow. So even if they promise you high speed, in reality, you are really low in speed. And since it's important that you have uh, these steady connections, that uh, is a really bad thing. Uh, and then, of course, coming back to county council, IT again, there are firewalls. Uh, if you want to have a communication where you are coming from inside the system, you want to have a communication with the outside system, it's a big no-no. It's basically not happening. So what we see this is driving is that you, if you want to start this, the biggest lessons learned here is you need to have collaboration with IT departments from the start. Uh, and not to be bad with them because they only do the job. This all, also means that you need to lift this to a higher level. You can't just come into IT and say, now we want this. You have to look at how you change policies. So you have to look at the ICT policies and solutions. And another lesson learned here is that start working together as fast as you can. So you just don't show up to IT with a purchasing order. So that's the kind of main lessons learned around uh, IT support. If you go into uh, the technical devices, we can basically say the lessons learned here is that there are functioning devices. It's not a big problem. Uh, Link and Logitech can be run on basically, I mean, if you look at cameras, they're basically built into computers today. You can take any tablet and they have camera. You basically have everything you need in your existing IT environment today. The limitations you have is basically in software. Uh, because if you just want to run a video session, that's quite, quite easy. But if you want to, at the same time, be able to log it, store it away, uh, to have it in the health record, you need some extra add-ons. And they are basically not uh, uh, that spread out in terms of the same, uh, or, or in the same manner as the uh, communication software is. So that's a problem. Uh, and if you... Uh, have a problem installing things to make sure it's not running, then you will have a problem with the staff being annoyed. Because if they want to do the work, they don't want to mess with technology. So it's really important that you, if you find the technology, make sure it's working. So this is something you need to have people uh, available all the time to make sure technology is working, updating software, etc. Because otherwise people get annoyed. If they get annoyed, they return to their everyday practice as it used to be. So if you get someone to move over, you have to feed them by helping them out. If you skip that, they move back to the pre-existing state of work. Uh, uh, but again, the lessons learned, it's kind of easy when it works. It's not a big problem, but you need introduction, you need manuals, and you need to have IT support uh, very close by, at least when you start, because people need to build the knowledge on how to work these tools and equipment. If you move into the user involvement, uh, this is one of the most crucial points, we think. Uh, in general, we see that primary healthcare personnel is positive to new technologies that, that improve their work. So if you have, have a point of saying that you want to improve work, not add to the work, but improve work, they're positive. Uh, they know the context and needs, so you don't have to invent stuff. You go out and talk to the people who are going to use te technology. They know everything there is to know about wounds, etc. So they just want to know how to implement it. Uh, it's very easy to identify uh, limitations and obstacles at this point also. And in general, they also have innovative solutions. So if you sit down with users, have them involved, you actually find solutions uh, to move forward quite fast. So one of the biggest lessons learned here is to make sure to have end user involved from the start. Simple as that. Uh, and that means that you need to have these user and participants in the implementation process. They won't like if you just show up, they show up to work one day and you say, here, start working. You need to have them uh, uh, with you from the start. Uh, 
And you also see some pointers, they said. Uh, they talked about better with wireless camera. This is something you see after a while when you're sitting, you have a camera on your computer. And if you talk about wound care, and someone have a nasty cut in their foot, what do you do? Should you move the camera down to the foot, the entire computer? So actually, mobile cameras or having smartphones with cameras, it's easy to move around and show someone. This is very simple. Uh, lessons learned, but actually makes huge improvement. Uh, Web-based booking system also for equipments and also for uh, personnel and patients is another idea. And then, of course, uh, the regular quest for manuals. If you impl implement something, they want the manual, how to work it. If I move into the last lessons learned, which is about uh, the further implementation in ordinary work, as said, we've been looking at uh, the situation where we have the wound care centers, uh, home care units, the primary health care workers, etc. Uh, we tried it out. It's, it can seen as a small scale solution. We did not look at, uh, uh, we did not solve policies, but the problem if you have no policy, you get the problem. Uh, you need to have general access and IT support. Uh, you have to have managers who are actually interested in improving the primary health care situation. Otherwise, they will just see this as a cost. So this is coming back to decision makers again. Uh, they, there has to be a need to improve the situation. Otherwise, it's really hard to do things. You have to live with the fact that you have uh, slimmed organizations. So you can't just say that, uh, uh, let's try this out for a month. You need to have an, a very clear idea on the benefits because when we were running with these in live uh, situations. They saw the benefit, so they could set aside time to try it out, but it's a really, really slim time you have to try it out, so you have to make sure that you get it working, because there is a constant financial pressure. So if we move over to lessons learned, we see that there is a need of overall ICT policies. Here we say Blekinge, because we tried it in Blekinge. But in general, uh, ICT policies need to change. You need to have teleconsultation in strategic plans. You can't have it as something you run on the side. Teleconsultation, telemedicine, whatever you call it, it it's something which is intertwined with your strategies. It's changing healthcare to the roots. So you need to have an idea on how to work that. Uh, and to get it implemented, you also need guidelines. And this means that you need to adapt a lot of system to work with this. Because everything is, is day, today is work to the kind of uh, human scheduling, but you now need to work things based on uh, uh, computing also. And that is basically the sum of things I think Evie wanted to say. So thank you for that. <laughs>